The office of Black Rod is best known for its odd role in the state opening of Parliament. Black Rod! But the job is, for the rest of the year, a senior post in running Parliament. It brought David Leakey into close contact with John Burko. He creates a climate of intimidation and fear amongst a whole group of people. That's MPs, some journalists, it may not be very many, but certainly members, uh, and certainly the staff. And I, I can recall often um, people being very concerned about whether or not to take an issue or when to take an issue uh, to the speaker. Um, and um, I, I have uh, own my own personal experience of an issue needed to be resolved. Um, a meeting was set up. Um, I, I was to uh, present or lead on an issue, and um, other staff didn't didn't make the meeting. Right. Why was that? They were fearful that uh, Mr. Burko wasn't going to like the recommendation that was being put to him. So you were, you didn't want to be there when he was going to get bad news? I think some people um, have felt that, yeah. So can you give us some examples of uh, what's happened? It, it, sitting, um, actually, I can't remember whether it was in his office or in his outer office, uh, talking to his staff and others uh, about the seating arrangements for high-profile visit in Westminster Hall. And uh, people had various different ideas about which groups should sit where. And uh, Mr. Burko joined the discussion and, uh, and he just didn't, took exception, complete exception to what was being proposed and discussed. And the red mist descended and he banged the table and yelled and uh, was highly insulting to me personally, um, including calling me an anti-Semite. Um, he's Jewish himself, I think. Um, uh, at, at, for which he apologised afterwards. For me, that's it's not a big deal. I've been shouted at by other people. Um, for me, it's water off a duck's back. But if that happened to someone else on the staff who wasn't used to that sort of treatment, um, that is, by any definition, bullying. It's intimidating. Um, it's unreasonable. It's disproportionate. Then there is the wider issue. Um, not what goes on behind closed doors with individual staff or members or uh, but what happens in public, in the chamber. And, um, and there you only have to look at the TV coverage, the live TV coverage of proceedings in the House of Commons chamber. And uh, you can see examples of the sorts of complaints people have made about his behavior in private. So um, intimidation, mimicking people, mocking people. People can make a judgment about whether that is acceptable behaviour and the standard uh, which we want set in public life by our parliament and by our speaker in our parliament. Mm. And my own personal view is that I don't think it does meet the standard. So we've been struck by silence on both sides of the house about this issue. There's been a real reluctance among MPs to try to uh, address the speaker's conduct. It's very difficult to challenge the speaker because he is so powerful and um, I know from what MPs on all sides of the House have said to me um, and that is that they wouldn't risk uh, complaining about or voting against uh, the speaker because um, uh, to use the words that some of them have used with me he would be vindictive and not call them or perhaps even be rude to them um, and there's no point in being an MP in the chamber if you never attract the eye of the speaker and have a chance to have your say. Um, and so MPs are fearful of speaking out against him. And I think quite rightly um, there hasn't been any movement to censure uh, the speaker or even to remove him because the tribal politics are such that um, it's perceived uh, it's not perceived, it's widely, widely acknowledged that the Labour Party um, uh, uh, obtain a, a considerable political benefit from Mr Burko's treatment of uh, the Tory front benches, for example, and that therefore why would the, why would the opposition seek to remove a speaker who serves, um, serves them well? Um, and without the support of the, of the opposition, then a movement against the speaker will fail. Did you, um, did you make any attempts to intervene about Mr Burke's behaviour when you were in office? Uh, no. 
um, except that I reported what had happened to um, the people to whom I, I reported. Um, uh, but I, it, for me, it was, it was just a sort of ridiculous event. Um, it wasn't troublesome for me. Um, I didn't feel like a victim. Um, but then uh, that's me. Um, you understood how other people could? Or I, I, I certainly understand how other people could. Um, but I, I was not um, on the House of Commons staff and therefore not in the mix of what was going on in the House of Commons. Why have you chosen to speak out at this moment now? Well, for the very simple reason that when I saw the terms of reference for the inquiry, and given my own experiences and the reports of other people who've made allegations, I thought that it was inappropriate that in individual uh, investigations uh, were ruled out, uh, seemed, appeared to be ruled out of the inquiry. And I thought that was wrong, and I thought it was right to say something about it. And I felt that because I'd been on the receiving end uh, of behaviour, which seems to have been uh, meted out to other people, uh, I was in a position to draw attention to this. And I think it's right that it should be, it should have a, it should be looked at. Order. Last autumn, the Speaker gave a statement on standards of behaviour. Let me make it clear. There must be zero tolerance of sexual harassment or bullying here at Westminster or elsewhere. I don't know if you've seen the footage of uh, Mr Verko last year speaking about how he's going to have zero tolerance for bullying and harassment. Hypocrisy is the thought that comes to mind. What do you think should happen next? Well, uh, that, that is for Parliament to decide. It's, it's not for me to decide or even recommend. Uh, but we live in an open society, and if people have got um, a complaint or a point to make, like me, and I'm just a, a voter, an ordinary taxpayer like everybody else, I'm having my say. And I just don't think Mr Burko matches up to the standards so that I expect of a Speaker in our Parliament um, and the sort of standards that we would expect to see applied, uh, whether it's by a government minister. And recently, a number of government ministers have resigned for breaches of the code, and the question one has to ask is, is this up there with them? I think it needs a serious look at, and uh, Parliament needs to um, examine whether what's going on there matches the standards in public life. Well, we put Mr Leakey's accusations to the Speaker's office, and they gave us this statement. Mr. Speaker refutes all the allegations levelled by Mr. Leakey. John Berko and David Leakey are two very different people with very different backgrounds, perspectives and ideas. They had fundamental disagreements in 2011 and 2012, but interacted adequately after that.